Hello fellow programmers. So my friends told me that I should touch grass, so I went outside and- Psych! I coded a tree growth simulation. This is what it looks like. This took many many hours of work, and I will show you how it works on the code level and how I made it. Test 1. I decided that to make this program, I should add a growth function and a branch function. A growth function will, well, grow the tree, and a branch function will, well, branch off. So I began programming. <laughs> Here's what I have. You can see the line process in red. Every time I activate it, it will follow the lines and add a new line if there is no extra line. Sounds easy, right? Well, let me explain it on the code. Each line is defined as an object dictionary in a list. The dictionary includes information like the line's ID number, its target line ID number, its X and Y positions for both points, its height, its personality, what it ate for lunch, what you ate for lunch, your social security, when a new branch process is started, it is added as an object dictionary in a separate list. It starts from the root line, which has an ID of 0, since Python starts counting from 0 because... This line process dictionary has information like where the line process currently is, where it will live, where it wants to live, where it could live, where you live. Now a function will go through every line process in the line process list against its will. and check where it currently is. Then it changes where it currently is to the target of the line it is currently on. Keep in mind that all lines are identified by their ID numbers. Each item in a list has an ID number depending on its position on the list. If an item is removed, however, the ID of that item will change. And as Einstein once said, Calling the wrong ID that either doesn't exist or are wrong is not poggers. Or, uh, he, he said something like that, I think. <laughs> Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that I gave each line an ID once appended to a list. In order to call it, the function must first call another function before it that translates the real ID with its list ID. I essentially created an ID for IDs to make the ideal ID's ID ID work. Now for branch processes. Test 2. I successfully created the branch process. You may also notice that the lower part of the tree grows thicker. When a branch process reaches its end, it will append a random number of lines at random angles. If the width of the stem above the current stem is too thin, it will add weight to that stem. Making a branch process sounds easy, right? Well, let me explain it on the code. Each branch process has its own object dictionary attached to its angle and line. To draw a line, you need the coordinates of two points. But in this case, the line tilt is calculated using its angle. Test 3 and 4. Sometimes it looked like there were a hundred branches in one area, and sometimes the tree would grow very sideways. Like what is that? Ew! It looks like an octopus! So I decided to add bounding boxes like this. Bounding boxes will be used to calculate collisions to stop branches from overcrowding. Sounds easy, right? Well, let me explain it on the code. To do this, I got the two positions that define the line and translated it into y-intercept form by calculating the slope and solving for b. With this formula, I then go to the negative reciprocal of m to get the perpendicular lines and drew lines starting from those positions parallel to the middle. This creates this effect. Test 5 Test 6 Forcing your computer to do tons of calculations for these many lines against its will will make your computer To prevent this, you can get the gridded bounding boxes by getting the most extreme points of the line and drawing a box around it Sounds easy, right? Well, let me explain it on the c No, I'm just kidding, It's you just draw a box around it Test 7. To help prevent more collision, I added angle protection. A branch has a lower chance of spawning at a similar angle of that of another branch. Test 8. This version shows the areas of the tree that are colliding on the gridded bounding boxes in red. Test 9. I then created a function that detects where two lines will intercept using some algebra. Simply get the two y-intercept form equations and make them equal to each other and solve for x. With x, you can then solve for y. Here's what the lines look like on the tree. Oh. Oh, that's a lot of dots. To actually show points, you must detect whether the point actually lies on the line. Sounds easy, right? Well, let me explain it on the code. You can do this by getting the distance from both ends of the line to the point and adding them together. 
If the sum is greater than the length of the line, then the point is not on the line. The distance is calculated using the Pythagorean theorem. Test 11. To test collision, the tree now stops growing when it hits something. Only for this version though. If a collision exists, the width of the stems that have collided will now decrease. If a stem disappears, the stem above it will no longer be supported and will also decrease. Test 13. A lot of times, the tree would have a very unnatural sharp angle. So to fix this, I wanted to add a system that straightens the tree. So I simply created a function that compares the adjacent stems and figures out if their angle difference is too high, shown in red circles. Now I can make it straighten out by rotating that stem until it is straight enough. This is only my first time programming something like this. It can't be that hard, right? Oh no, what's happening? My tree is dry! Test 15. So I very easily coded the straightening function with ease on the first try. I did this by having to update all forward stems positions after an angle update. But now the line widths don't work. I sure do love how easy it is to code things. Oh yeah. Test 16. So I fixed the line width and created a centering function. The tree will now rotate until the average number of stems is in the center of the tree. As you can see, I made it way too strong and as it is moving faster than the tree stems can update, which is causing them to become disconnected. Here you can also see the straightening function in action. Test 17. I slowed down the centering function. You may notice a lot of flickering inside of the stem. This is a stem that has grown at a very similar angle to that of another. It hinders the growth of the tree by wasting process resources, but does not remove itself as I did not make the collisions activate for stems adjacent to it as that would cause the entire tree to dissolve since all stems are connected. Test 18. To fix this, I made a separate function that detects if it is inside of another stem by using some more collision detection math. It removes weight from the stem before the stem that was detected being inside of another. You can see that it follows the stem back when I force the tree to grow and branch perfectly straight up. This solves the problem. Time to add leaves. Test 19. The leaves are... Look, I tried, okay? I also allowed at a maximum two collisions to be possible. The leaves finally work! The way I made the leaves work is based on the coordinates of the line. The shade of green depends on the position that the leaves are at. This is better than using random functions since it prevents flickering and uses less RAM. And that's how I created a tree growth simulation. Maybe I should just go outside instead of coding a tree simulation. Nah. Overall. This took many hours of work, and the process took months to do, so it would be really nice if you considered subscribing. I'm Triangle Man on My Name is Evan Bro's channel, and I'm out.